All right, let's start off looking at some guitars. The AIP was originally designed as a guitar-specific processor, although, as you can hear and see, it can be used on a lot of different elements, but it was originally conceived as a guitar processor, and the guitar is kind of the centerpiece of this track. So I'm just going to solo the main guitar melody for a second. <laughs> And you can see here, these are the melody guitars and their bus output channel. So we have one instance of AIP on each of these guitars that are panned hard left and right. We have the guitar amp simulator, which in this case is the STL tone hub. And then on the output bus, we have a compression plugin. So pretty light signal path. I'm gonna do this. I'm just going to solo one of the guitars because they're the same part played twice, panned hard left and right, but this way we can see exactly what all the changes are as we adjust one channel and it won't sound all wonky. So this is just the track by itself. And now I'm going to disable AIP and we can compare the difference. I'm going to switch back and forth as we go here. So a lot of different things going on there. Let's kind of go through the different sections of the AIP one at a time. So let's just check out what the high and low pass filters are doing. I'm going to loop the guitar and bring that in and out. Not a night and day difference, but kind of uh, reigning in some of the higher and lower frequencies, as is usually the case. We've got an EQ cut going on here, not a whole lot. We are cutting minus 1.3 dB at 4,134 hertz. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> So tucking in some of the more uh, abrasive frequencies. Um, let's keep going. We have a compressor over here, a lot of the standard compression controls. One thing that's very nice is that you have the option of putting the compressor either before or after the EQ. So let's hear the guitar again and just bring the compressor in and out. <laughs> So a little bit of a level boost happening there and more just kind of a general thickening of the sound, I would say. Uh, let's look at a couple of the secret weapons. Let's check out the proprietary signal processor. This is basically the saturation engine of the AIP. And let's just bring it in and out to start with. <laughs> And to tweak the controls, we're going to go to the back panel, which is at the Cornif logo at the top. And the proprietary signal processor basically emulates different types of analog gear. And I have, for the guitars here, I have it set to emulate tape. It's got a transient response, which is going to control how dark or bright the sound is. Let's hear how it sounds as we tweak that. Since a lot of what we're talking about has to do with how a track sits in a mix, let's actually bring the drums and bass back into the track. It's not going to sound exactly like the mix because we still have just one guitar channel soloed because I want to be able to change things on just that one track. But let's see how this sounds. <laughs> Okay, so now we just have that mono guitar going on. And you can hear there, as we turn that down, it's tucking the guitar into the mix a little more. It's not a huge difference, but it's there if you listen for it. Now, there's three different types of analog gear that uh, the PSP is emulating. I have it set to the tapes right now. You can also set it to a tube emulation, which sounds like this. And there you can really hear how the transient response uh, changes the tube mode. We also have this aggressive mid-range, which is more transistor sound based, I would say. So 
So tubes, tapes, and transistors. And I'm going to switch between the three different modes while it plays. <laughs> And for me, I just felt like the tape mode had the nicest balance of smoothing out the edges a little bit, but also kind of helping it sit in the mix a little more and just kind of giving it a front and center kind of attitude. Let's also quickly look at how the PSP module responds to input level. A lot of analog gear is very sensitive to how hot you are hitting it, how high the input signal is. And depending on how high or low that signal is, you can get different types of sounds. So I have it set here. There's a fair amount of input trim brought down, and then I'm compensating for that with the output level. Let's just hear that for a second. <laughs> Now I'm going to really push the input. Let's bring that all the way up. Let's bring the input close to all the way down. Let's hear how that sounds. So you can hear it's this really compressed, heavily squashed kind of tone. Let's do this. I'm going to bring the input level back and try and adjust the output. And we'll hear how it changes as we go through the different range of the input. And you can see there, it's really starting to warm up. I'm going to switch to the tube mode so we can hear how that responds to gain staging. And let's try the transistor mode as well. Let's get to my favorite part, which is the insufferable mid-range filter. Before I talk about it, let's just hear it in and out. Here it is with and without. So basically the insufferable mid-range filter is designed to zero in on very particular kinds of frequencies that are prominent in electric guitar sounds. One of the things I've always found as a guitar player and as an engineer is that when you're talking about the range from like 1k to 5k, it's kind of a danger zone. If there's not enough frequency content in that area, then the guitar can sound kind of dull. But if there's too much, then it can start sounding very harsh and abrasive. So what this lets you do is zero in on very specific frequencies and then decide how much of that you want to cut out. So let's set reduction all the way off. So it's still engaged, but right now we're do not doing any reduction. And then as it plays, I'm going to slowly bring it in so you can hear how it starts to change things. And then let's A-B it again. So for me, it really b helps bring the guitar forward and gives it a lot more warmth. It doesn't get rid of any of the impact or presence of the sound, but it filters out some of that ice pick stuff. Now there's a couple of additional controls here. The high frequency compensation is basically a high shelf filter that can make up for some of the frequencies you might lose by applying this kind of very focused reduction. I'm going to bring it all the way down, and then as the track plays, I'll bring it up slowly. So 
So it's a nice way of kind of counterbalancing the effect of the focus frequency reduction. It gives you a little more high end should you want it. There's also an octave range here, and this lets you zero in on different octaves of a problematic frequency. So right now I have it set to mode 3, which means that it will focus on, on this frequency, which is 5.1k. It will also go one octave above and one octave below 5k. The second mode is just one octave above, I believe. Yeah, one octave above. And the third mode is just that band by itself. So let's change the octave range as the part plays and we'll hear how it impacts the way that the guitar sounds. <laughs> And you can also sweep through the frequency to isolate a particular frequency that you find problematic. So I'm going to change the frequency as the track plays. And you can hear as we do that that you're hearing different frequencies getting filtered. It also has kind of a side chain feature where it will emphasize whatever frequencies are getting filtered. I recommend turning this down before you engage it because it can be a little harsh. So I'm bringing the output volume down and here we go. There you go. And you can really start, as you scroll through the frequencies, you can really start hearing certain problematic frequencies that are really heavily resonant. So I'm going to sweep through the range of the frequencies with the side chain engaged. And now let's turn off the sidechain monitor and let's just hear the frequency compensation by itself. Mm -hmm. 